Dr. David Harari, the medical director for Blue Cross, Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota. Thanks so much for joining us today, Dr. Harari. How are you doing? Yeah, pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So rehab scams, this is a new one for me. I've never heard of it before. What do you want people to know about rehab scams? What do they look like? Yeah, I mean, most importantly, we want to make sure that folks get the appropriate and legitimate um, care that they need. Um, unfortunately, we know there are instances where uh, other organizations or people are engaging in illegitimate behaviors and in, in, in reaching out to, to patients who need uh, treatment and, and getting them into either facilities that maybe are non-existent or uh, provide sub, subpar care. Um, leaving patients without the appropriate care and oftentimes with a tremendous economic burden. Um, so, you know, it's important that folks uh, receive the appropriate care, receive the necessary care that they need for their condition. Um, and we want individuals to be aware of red flags that may not, um, that they may not necessarily know about and now that they could be aware of in order to receive the appropriate treatment that they need. Absolutely. I'm glad you said that, Dr. Harari. What are some of the red flags that people should be searching for when they're out there looking for treatment options? Yeah, I think the, the you know, the, the general sort of motto of, you know, if it's if it's too good um, to be true, it, it, it probably isn't, right? So we, we know, and I think this is a well-known um, phenomenon across the country, you know, if, if someone's sort of waving fr free flights or, um, you know, exotic trips to a, a, a rehab center or treatment center somewhere else in the country, oftentimes, you know, in somewhere, uh, you know, more tropical or warm climates, um, you know, that, that should sort of set off alarm bells. So, you know, if, if someone's offering a, a free trip, all expenses paid to come to their treatment center, um, no questions asked, um, you know, not really engaging with you about the type of treatment you need or what type of insurance you have, um, you know, that should be an immediate trigger of, you know, let me do my due diligence and make sure that, um, you know, this is a legitimate center, this is a licensed uh, facility, these are credentialed providers and healthcare pro professionals that are going to be providing treatment. Um, so, you know, we, I, I encourage, I think, you know, all organizations will encourage um, both uh, individual seeking services and their family members or friends or anyone in their support network uh, to really do some research to, to, to make sure that the providers are, are who they who they are said to be, to make sure they are licensed, to make sure they are credentialed, um, to make sure the facility is licensed and credentialed. I would want folks to sort of inquire and be an active participant in their treatment, make sure, um, find out about what does a typical day or a typical week look like in the treatment center. Yeah, those are certainly a lot of questions that you should be keeping in mind. Now I'm wondering about the consequences for falling for a scam like this, Dr. Hurry, are they mostly financial? I assume the scammers want some money out of this, or are there health implications that we need to be known about as well? Yeah, I think I think it's twofold, um, both health consequences and and financial, both which, which can be tremendously burdensome um, and detrimental to to individuals. So on the one hand, um, you know some of some of these scams involve uh, shuttling patients to illegitimate facilities, uh, not, not providing uh, the appropriate care or providing substandard of care, um, which can lead obviously to detrimental uh, health benefits to folks who really need uh, medical care. And on the other hand, you know, oftentimes uh, the scams involve uh, enrolling patients in, in uh, various scenarios in which they may or may not have insurance or they're told they have insurance to cover the benefits and they really don't. Um, and then they're left oftentimes with a tremendous financial burden, uh, oftentimes um, with individuals who, who simply cannot afford to, to pay those uh, extraordinary bills. Yeah, you know, the, Dr. Hori, this just goes to prove scammers are out there to prey on those who are vulnerable. And this is maybe not a, a population of people that we that comes to the forefront of our minds. Usually it's the elderly that we're concerned about, but certainly people uh, looking for help, looking for rehab help, you know, they're vulnerable and they need to be, you know, protected. So what can we do to protect our loved ones? Um, what can we do to prevent them from falling for something like this? Yeah, and I want to stress that, it, you know, it, you know, the, the issue of substance use and addiction is, you know, I like to say is non-discriminatory. It, it really affects 
you know, folks from all sectors of society, from cultural status and all socioeconomic status. Uh, we know when, when folks need treatment and when they're at a position where they're seeking help, they're often at a, at a very vulnerable uh, position in, in, their, in their treatment course. Um, and, you know, oftentimes, understandably, it, it's hard for, for individuals to, to really do the deal with due diligence and research themselves to make sure that, um, you know, facilities and providers are credentialed and licensed. And, you know, it's it's unfortunate that they have to do that. Um, and, it, and it's very challenging to do that at a time